The first month of flying, I bought my first apartment. I grew up very humble financially. Uh, this wasn't going to be a long-term thing for me. Are you currently flying and feeling stuck, not knowing what to do next? Or are you trying to look for ways to leverage the seasonal hot thing that you have right in front of you to jumpstart your life? Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Fabi and I share my non-linear life journey on this channel to encourage you to embrace your own journey and feel less alone in the process. In this video, I want to talk about how I used my time flying as Singapore Airlines cabin crew as a stepping stone in my life. I've actually posted a couple of videos about my flying journey, including why I decided to fly, how I got in with one try, and why I think you should or should not join the airline. So if you're watching this video, chances are you might find my other flying related videos interesting. So I will link them in the description box down below and you can check them out right after you watch this video. Okay, going back to today's topic, I want to talk about how the decision to fly helped me propel my life. So if you watch my video where I talked about why you should join the airline, I also talked about how the decision to fly actually changed my life. So today in this video, I want to break it down to you like how it actually changed my life. I want to give you some context into the tangible things that I gained and how I went about setting my life up through flying as a flight attendant with the airline. To put things into perspective, I grew up very humble financially. I graduated with a degree and not much money in the bank. I am still very grateful that my family supported me with my study, they supported me with my tuition, and I didn't have any student debt that I needed to take care of. Even though I don't think student debt is a thing, at least not in the country or in the environment where I grew up in. Regardless, I am grateful for my family. They supported me with my studies so that I could have all the tools that I needed to build my life. Even though I did have that support from my family, I think it's fair to say that I'm not privileged financially so if I wanted to improve my life quality and get to where I wanted to be financially I had to work for it so once I made up my mind that I wanted to take on the sky as a flight attendant I just focused my energy on getting my foot in the door with Singapore Airlines. Again, link in the description box down below if you're interested. And so that is some context around my situation. This is like a real situation, not a situation ship and where I was coming from. So when I knew that I got the job with the airline, that was going to set my life up. Now, let's get into the heart of the matter. I'm going to break it out to you into the what, the how, and the outcome. The what is my mindset, the how is how I approach things, and the outcome is going to be the tangible things that I gained from flying. The what for me is to begin with the end in mind. So when I started flying, I knew that this wasn't going to be a long-term thing for me. It doesn't mean that I wasn't open to the idea of flying for a long time. I was open, but the more I was in it, the more I felt like this chapter of my life was meant to serve me for a season, not for a lifetime. So in other words, I knew that I had to leverage this opportunity while it lasted. And that means that I began with the end in mind. This is actually one of the seven principles that was talked about in a book called Seven Habits of Highly Effective People written by Dr. Stephen Covey. In that book, he talks about the importance of dividing finding a definition of success and create a plan to measure. Now, I want to say that I definitely did not take this verbatim, but more so directionally. So I kind of had a rough idea of what I was hoping to get out of this chapter of my life. And I set three goals for myself, two financial goals and one personal goal. On the financial goal side, the first goal that I had was to get a place of my own in my first year of flying. And then the second goal was to be able to save X amount of money to help set me up and prep me for the next step in life. I didn't know what that would look like yet at that point, but I knew that I needed some funds to be able to support myself. And on the personal goal side, what I had was I wanted to take my mom on a big vacation. That was the three goals that I had. Moving on to the how. Now tying it back to my what, which is my two financial goals and my one personal goal, my how is actually pretty straightforward. I knew that in order for me to achieve my goals, it would require me to build healthy financial habits. So I did exactly that. I committed to two things, one, real estate purchase, and two, saving. In the first month of flying, I bought my first apartment. In hindsight, I felt like it was kind of a risky move. What if for some reason I hated flying or things didn't work out? And this actually reminds me of 
a story that I read in Simu Liu's book called We Were Dreamers. I think he talked about his experience working as an accountant at Deloitte, and then after eight months, he got let go. And at the end, I think his parents supported him. But thankfully, it didn't happen to me. I took a three-year credit to pay off the apartment, and I'm glad that I made the commitment because not only did it help me set aside a portion of my income, it also helped motivate me to keep going. Now, let's move on to the saving side. Going back to the second financial goal that I had, which was to be able to save X amount of money to help me prep for the next step in my life, I actually committed to saving 40% of my income on top of the monthly payment that I had to pay off my apartment. And that actually was really helpful for me. Like at that time, I didn't really know what I wanted to do after flying. So as time went by and through a few trials and errors that I made while I was flying, I figured that I would want to go back to school and pursue an MBA and make a big move to Canada. And hey, MBA degrees crazy expensive but I was able to support myself throughout my study and it was a full-time study meaning it didn't leave me with much time to do other things such as working. I was glad that I was able to support myself thanks to the financial habits and the commitment that I made while I was flying. Now you might think that I might have lived frugally for me to be able to achieve these financial goals but that couldn't be further from the truth. I was able to enjoy and live my life to the fullest while I was flying, I went to places that I wanted to go, I took vacations from time to time, I maximized the travel purse that I had. The difference is that I did that after I did what I needed to do in order for me to accomplish my goals. On the personal goal side, which is for me to be able to take my mom on a big vacation, I was actually able to fulfill that too. Not only not only did I take her to one big vacation, but I took her to two. So we went to New Zealand for her first big vacation. And then we also went to Europe. And this is not to flex by any means. I just wanted to give some perspective into how I went about using my time flying as a stepping stone in my life. Before we wrap up, I just wanted to put a disclaimer that this is not financial advice by any means. I am not qualified to give you financial advice. That's not what this video is for. I'm just sharing my personal experience in terms of how I maximized the time that I had and the opportunity that I had while flying to help set me up for my next step in life. Hopefully some of what I talk about in this video would inspire you to make the most of what you're doing in life. Obviously everyone's situation is different so please take whatever makes sense to you and leave what doesn't. Now I have a question for you. What's your biggest takeaway from this video? Leave me a comment down below and if you find this video useful please like and subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for spending the time with me and I hope you have a lovely day and I'll see you soon. Bye now.